Hello, my name is Luke, and I want to know if humans are able to travel to the Titanic. My name is Dudley Foster. I'm at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution's Visitor Center. And uh, I was a pilot uh, on the Alvin uh, when we made the first man dives to the Titanic. Uh, myself and uh, Bob Ballard and Ralph Hollis were the three people in the submarine when we went down and did the first direct observation. Uh, it was sort of anticlimactic though because we had some problems with the submarine and uh, we weren't sure exactly where the wreck was. We had an estimated position. Uh, one of the ways we would have found it was with a sonar system which sends out sound waves that, which would have bounced off the hull and came back and our instruments would have shown a large target, like a radar target, and, uh, but that was broken. Uh, we had some problems with our batteries, so we weren't sure how long we were going to be able to stay down. So we were sort of driving the direction we thought it would be, uh, sort of blindly, uh, and we came up a little bit of a sand slope, mud slope, and then we saw this huge black sheet of steel in front of us, which uh, and we had to like slam on the brakes uh, so I wouldn't run into it and, and that stirred up a big cloud of dust behind us so uh, it, which obscured our vision and so at that point it was a little we were a little apprehensive because we weren't sure how many cables and things might be hanging around the wreck which would be you know, dangerous in the submarine if we got tangled up in there because there was really uh, not a no way to pull us up on a big cable or something like that because Alvin is a free swimming vehicle. So uh, a little apprehensive backing out of there in the blind, uh, but we did. But then the next day we knew exactly where it was, went back down, had fixed all our problems. And then we really got to take a good look at it and it was just, uh, for me, a really an amazing, it was a personal, uh, one of the highlights of my career uh, driving the submarine as a pilot. Um, because there were so many interesting features on it, especially a lot of the brass work was still in very good condition. Um, the brass around the viewports and the, the mechanisms for the lifeboat davits and the, the capstan tops had brass on them that were just pristine. You'd expect them to be, sort of be green and corroded looking, but they weren't. They were just really looked like they'd been polished recently. Um, so, and, and sort of try to look in, in the windows to see what we could see of artifacts. Um, I spent three days there on the wreck driving the submarine around and I did it mostly on the, the forward section. So I got a, a good opportunity to drive all around the various decks uh, on it and, and we had the Jason Jr. remotely operated vehicle attached to Alvin and, and so I would drive up to like the grand staircase uh, which was pretty eerie because we weren't sure how strong the wreck was and Alvin we'd actually sit it down on the deck itself uh, although Alvin weighs 35,000 pounds in air it's basically neutrally buoyant so we can sit down and not really make any pressure on the wreck at all so I would sit down very gently and, and o overhang this big gaping hole where the grand staircase um, atrium was at one time that was just a big gaping hole and I would drive up there and I couldn't see the deck anymore all I could see was the big hole and it was kind of eerie that thinking you might fall in there but luckily we just settled down there and ran Jason Jr. down inside Titanic and, and filmed a lot of like chandeliers hanging and it was uh, just so many interesting features there that uh, it's one of the highlights of, like I said, my career and I've, I've made over 500 dives in a lot of different environments and, and this is certainly one of the most memorable ones.